math. That's all the math you need for computer science. We're going to talk today about vectors, which is going to be the first kind of object that we're going to use in linear algebra. It basically forms the fundamental building block of everything else we're going to do. And in this episode, I'm going to define what vectors are, give you some different ways to think about them, some examples, talk about the different operations that you can use to operate on vectors. And then we're going to do a little code in the languages R and Python in order to show you different ways that you can manipulate them via a computer program, which is what we're going to do a lot because a vector can pack in a lot of data, we're going to want a computer to be able to help us with that. So, a vector is basically something that can be contrasted with the other thing you've learned about up to this point in your math career, which is called a scalar. So we have scalar quantities and vector quantities. The word scalar is related to the word scale, uh, and you can think of it as stepping on the scale, and you get a number from your scale, right, that tells you how much you weigh. You may or may not like that number, but you do, in fact, get one number back. And that's the key point about what a scalar quantity is. It basically just means it has one number to it. It is a one-dimensional quantity. can't be broken down any more than that. So we might say that Google's stock price today is a scalar value. It's going to be 68 or whatever it's trading for. Uh, whatever I answer to a particular survey question on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like action movies, right? Whatever answer I give to that is going to be a scalar quantity that we're going to represent with a scalar variable. Uh, you can think of a million other examples because basically everything that can be represented in terms of a numeric quantity is in fact a scalar, right? Now, it turns out that we are going to have lots and lots of opportunities to want to represent more than just one number together kind of in a collection. We're going to want to have sort of a composite data structure that has more than just one element to it, and that is going to be called a vector. Instead of just keeping track of what Google stock price is today, maybe you'll want to keep track of what it has been at the close of business every day for the last year. So I can get sort of a time series and see, you know, has it been going up or down recently? You know, when were the big dips? When were the big spikes? etc. Maybe I'm taking a survey of 20 questions, and so I'm not just interested in what did I answer to question number one. I want to know what did I answer to all the different questions, so I can treat them in some way. I can do some kind of statistical operation to see, you know, what other people I'm similar to or whatever. Maybe in addition to my weight, I want to keep track of my weight and my height and my BMI and my pulse and my blood pressure and a bunch of other things, and I want to put those all together in a vector, right? So vector is, is a word that's a little interesting. It really means to carry somewhere. You may have heard they talk about, you know, like with the Zika virus, which mosquitoes are vectors for that? That means which mosquitoes are carrying those. Uh, and really, as we see what vectors mean, you'll understand the reason that we use that term, because there's an, an interpretation of the vector concept that really does involve carrying or translating something. Right now, though, just think of it as a collection of numbers all together uh, of any size and what we're going to get out of that is essentially a multi-dimensional quantity instead of a single dimensional quantity all right so if you look at this in terms of notation uh, you know we might say we have the letter a and that equals 5 that's how we represent a scalar quantity that's a scalar or we can think of it as a one dimensional quantity and really, you know, the way you might visualize this uh, going back to third grade or something, and hopefully you still have something like this in your mind because this is a very useful way to think about numbers, is the number line, right? And the number line is the quintessential one-dimensional representation of uh, a thing. And we have the positives going in one direction and the negatives going in another direction, yada, yada, yada. And when we say A equals 5, we might visualize that by saying, aha, A is right there on our number line here, right? And you can imagine adding numbers to it and going to the right and going to the left, subtracting numbers. And we can say, you know, if one number's here on the number line and one number's here, we can figure out which one's greater or less, all that kind of stuff, right? All, that, all those things Mrs. Jones taught you in third grade. Grade, uh, are very useful. However, when we deal with a vector quantity, and the way we're going to show that is something like this. We're going to draw this cute little arrowhead on top of the variable, and that's going to indicate that it is a vector instead of a scalar quantity. And the way we're going to draw that typically is with boxes, and we're going to put something like this on here, 2, 5. And that means that this vector has two different elements to it. Uh, and that is why it is not a scalar quantity, it is a vector quantity. In this case, it's two-dimensional. I'm going to define the term dimension a little bit more uh, formally later on, and we'll talk about exactly what that means, but you can already get the idea, right? It basically means that it has two parts to it. Um, I could also say that I've got a vector y, and this vector y is 2, 3, 19, negative 7, pi. 
And that is also a vector that is a five dimensional vector, right? Uh, and that's something that we can't visualize uh, in our minds geometrically because we only deal in a three dimensional world. We can actually visualize this guy, this two dimensional thing. Um, but in order to do so, we can't use a number line, right? There's no way to represent this X on a number line. You might say, well, can't we just put two dots on there like that and that, and then we can still use our number line? Well, actually, no, because then there'd be no way to tell the difference between two five versus five two, right? Those would actually have the same representation on this thing. And that's not really what we want anyway, because two and five are typically gonna be in two different axes, two different dimensions. And in fact, that's what we're gonna to use to visualize this is some sort of two dimensional representation, which I'm sure you've also seen in your life. So imagine our little axes here, and we've got an X axis and a Y axis. I use X and Y loosely. I don't mean X and Y in terms of the name of the variable, because remember we had our X thing here uh, as being two and five, so when I say X axis, I don't mean that X, I just mean the going left and right axis versus the going up and down axis, right? Uh, but we could represent that point as a point right there, right? Which is two in the X direction, and then four, uh, five in the Y direction, right? So that is a good way to represent this point. We basically need two dimensions in order to represent a two dimensional quantity, okay? So very simple, very, powerful idea and one of the things that makes vectors so useful is the fact that they're so flexible. What we're going to talk about next is not only some examples of vectors in the wild, so to speak, but we're also going to talk about a number of different ways to think of vectors and really all of these different ways you have to master because there will be times when one is really amenable to the type of operation or the type of interpretation we want to do and other times you have to use another one. So we're going to sort of talk about the latter of five different ways of thinking about vectors. Stay tuned.